In the last video, I told you that you can get a cheap laptop and refurbish it and have something like a distraction-free writing device for very little money. Well, it's time to put my money where my mouth is and show you exactly how to do that with this laptop. So let's take a look at these two laptops. Now this one here is my Aspire one that I've had. You saw it in the last uh, video. This is the new one, the black one, and it is uh, it. This one is actually older than this one. In fact, I discovered it has a single core processor, one gig of memory, 250 gigabyte hard drive, and for its time, that was perfectly acceptable. I've gone ahead and uh, kind of prepped these to be disassembled. We're going to upgrade this one with a hard drive and some some more memory. This one, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pop off and and uh, we're just gonna compare the inside. There are minor design differences between the two but it's not huge. I mean, you see that we've got round feet here and the holes on the panel are appropriately sized for that. The batteries are actually interchangeable. It's one of the few things on these laptops that is interchangeable. Hard drive bay here. Processor is, is slightly in a different location. Memory's in the pretty much the same location. Near as makes no difference. And... Wi-Fi cards are pretty well identical as well. So before we get started on upgrading the laptop, I want to note something. This laptop was, it was definitely used, but I bought it from somebody who refurbishes these things. And they actually did a very competent job of refurbishing this. They used an OEM installation of Lubuntu. They used, uh, they, they, clean it up for the most part there's still smudges and things on it the keyboard almost looks like it's been replaced uh it, it barely looks like it's been typed on at all which is absolutely it's that's phenomenal the one thing is there are four of these little screws and they're on mine too. Um, you see the posts here and also the posts on here. Well, those correspond to four little screws that are underneath the keyboard. So when you go to take one of these apart, and if the back doesn't come off easily, then what you have to do is you have to you have to there's little tabs in the top here. In fact, you can see, you may be able to see a couple of the tool marks when I use the, a very small screwdriver. You look for the little tabs, and I start in the middle, and you just push in the tab and pull up on the keyboard. And you do that all the way across the top, and then the whole keyboard can come out, and you can basically lever it up and, and remove those screws. The funny thing is, is... Those four screws, if the laptop's ever worked on, those four screws are the first to go and never come back because these panels are snap into place. That You don't need to have any screws to hold that panel on, and that's all they do. So this has got a, got a hard drive bay in it. This one obviously does not. They, they got rid of that. They moved the the fan and whatnot closer to the edge for the processor on this one this one's got a little bit of a duct work thing going on so there's just one screw to remove for the hard drive it's a little plastic here there we go a little plastic deal to pull that out and yeah this has never been worked on i i can already tell i think the guy basically got it and uh cleaned up maybe a couple of things but for the most part, probably just put software on it. 
I wonder if the laptop was ever even used, but who knows? It was sold used, so I, I assume it had been used by somebody at some point. So that's the hard drive. It's a 256 gigabyte hard drive. We're just going to pop this out. This is a standard hard drive. You know, the it's got heads and it's got platters that spin and it's a mechanical hard drive is what it is. Now we have solid state drives that will give this laptop a bit of a performance boost. Not huge because this has got uh, a single core processor in it, but it, it'll be it'll be noticeable and definitely something you want to do. Put these screws in. There we go. That's all there is to it. This hard drive bay will align it with connector properly. We'll just tuck that back in there again. Not a problem. Honestly, and we don't have to put the other screw in there, but, you know, let's go ahead and put the other screw in there. We took it out. We should probably put it back in. Second thing I want to do is I want to upgrade the memory. Now I've got a... This is just used memory. It's the, I happen to know this is a 2 gigabyte stick. This is a one gigabyte stick. Let's take a look. All you gotta do is pull the ears back, pop it out, and there it is. And as you can see, it's uh, DDR3, 1333, one gigabyte. We're gonna pop this two gigabyte stick in. I am not entirely sure if this matches exactly. If this is faster than this memory, what'll happen is the computer could go oh there's faster memory in here i'll just go ahead and use it at its at a faster speed or the memory will run at a slower speed without any difficulty it'll basically derate itself very slightly you'll never notice the difference apart from the fact that you'll have two gigs of memory instead of one gig really that's the only difference in this laptop, I've got four gigabytes of memory. I'm not entirely sure if this will handle four gigabytes of memory. There's, I, honestly, I don't have a four gigabyte memory stick, so I'm not going to put one in there. I'm going to just upgrade it to two. And when we consider the fact that this is going to be just a uh, distraction-free writing netbook, we don't really need a lot of memory. We don't need a big hard drive. I mean, if you notice... This is 128 gigabyte. I pulled out a 250 gigabyte drive. This 128 gigabyte drive literally cost me $25. So we're just gonna pop this on. See, we're just popping the back in. There's little clips in the back that you push, you put the panel in underneath and then you snap everything into place. There we go. And now on this one, there is a little bit of a lip. That is normal. That is what it looked like when I got the laptop. So, But as you can see, it, the whole panel just pops into place. If you ever wanted to take it off again, you just, you just pry this panel up along these three edges and open it up. Let's go ahead and it's the same thing on this one, the newer one. Make sure all the everything's clipped into place here. And you just pop everything into place. Now, see, I, I goofed up there. Well, not much of a goof, but I didn't quite get that into place. Pop it all the way back in. That's it. So, like I said, these batteries are interchangeable. So, I can put this battery on that laptop, this battery on this laptop. So, flip this over. As you can see, the keyboard, this, this, I replaced this keyboard with a brand new keyboard. This one looks brand new. It's got kind of an international keyboard, you know, international characters on it. But let's go ahead. I'm going to take this. There was a, apparently a sticker on there. It might have been something maybe a pawn shop did. We'll just take a little bit of goo gone, clean that up. It's one of those things, a little bit goes a long way. So there we go. All the sticker goop off of it. Now it's nice that this one folds back a little further than this one does. Not sure that that's a huge advantage, but it's certainly a difference. Let's go ahead and turn them on. 
They both have illuminated power buttons. This one is just shines through. This one, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's a light underneath. In the dark, it shows up really well. But I did install Chrome. I know that's a, kind of a no-no, but here, uh, here's the thing. As I said in a, in a previous video, your needs are different than what my needs are or what somebody else's needs will be. I need to be able to research and look things up online and have access to tools and utilities that I need to have access to. Now, that doesn't always necessarily mean that I need internet, but for some things, I do need Google Chrome. You know, distraction-free means, for me, just not opening the browser, not having games on my desktop, not having, you know, because these aren't games, these are all emulators. I can't just easily double-click on an icon and open up a game. You know, if I want to just concentrate on writing... I can just open up LibreOffice Writer. And really, I could have this start up automatically if I really wanted to. If, if that was the sole purpose of this machine, to only do writing, and that's all I ever wanted to do, well, I could just have LibreOffice Writer be the first thing that pops up, and I can just immediately start typing things in. So like on a clicky keyboard... You know, they're raised up, they make sound, they make noise. And this is the keyboard that I use, but I just set this in front of it. You know, if I want to start typing things, I do. The keyboard lights are something that will drain the battery faster. But I have this keyboard set on a in a, in a light pattern where it only lights up when you press a key. So it makes it much more energy efficient that way. The really nice thing about the Aspire 1 is if, especially if you're a touch typer and, and want to rest your hands on the, on the computer. So right now I've got the mouse enabled. This actually has a function. It's function F7. It'll disable the touchpad. So you can lay your fingers on it and not have to worry about messing up your typing. Because I find that even even with my hunting and pecking, sometimes the touchpad will respond to me moving or you know moving my hands above it, and that's super annoying because well it basically jumps to a different line and so you're typing along and then don't realize that it has jumped to another line and that can be super annoying. But this is why I think that these little Aspire ones are the perfect distraction-free writing. They cost, I mean, this one cost $30, and I just bought it. This one, I didn't, I actually didn't pay anything for it. They're, they're super cheap. They're super efficient. They have, the, especially these with the bigger battery on them, I mean, these will last easily six hours plus, you know, depending on your settings and what all you got going on. Notice on this one, and I mentioned it in the video, the little SD card reader is a eject SD card reader. And when you put the, a full-size SD card in here, it goes all the way into the laptop. This one also has a push to eject reader, but it doesn't go all the way in the laptop. And this sticks out just a little bit. Not a huge deal, just not quite as good as my other one. All right, so let's go ahead and put, put Linux on this real quick. Like I said, it's Zubuntu. The hard drive from the person who refurbished this computer put uh, Lubuntu on it. Both of them are fairly lightweight, efficient uh, operating systems and GUIs, graphical interfaces. That way you're not having to go out to the command line and type a bunch of commands in order to use the computer. Although that that's certainly something you could do. I think one of the things we need to do, because this is never going to run Windows again, at least not that I'm aware of, I'm going to take this Windows sticker off. There we go. 
It says errors found in one file. That's That always happens. I don't know what error it's finding in a file, but I never have an issue installing it. These Aspire ones are never were never the speed demons or anything like that. Very low power, very efficient little laptops. So I'm going to go ahead and install. So we have a blank hard drive that what we're dealing with. We're going to, go, of course, go with English because I don't speak Mandarin Chinese. Wi-Fi. Here we go. We want to download updates while installing and install third-party software and graphics. Don't know if it'll need it, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. As long as the whole point of connecting to Wi-Fi was to do that. Now I've got the the laptop loaded with Zubuntu and it is um it was a little difficult because I had to not install the updates automatically. I, I had to I had to not install those updates and I basically just left it offline. So I did an offline install. I didn't connect it to wireless and that type of thing because if I connected it to wireless and asked it to do updates it would freeze at a certain point and wouldn't go any further. And we'll let it boot here. But it was a little tricky. But I really not... I say I say it was a little tricky, but it wasn't... It wasn't difficult to figure out, just doing it a different way. So we're booting up here. So we've got the taskbar at the top, and we've got LibreOffice Writer in the favorites, just automatically by default. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into it real quick. Yeah, we got tips. Okay, we can close that out. First time running uh, <laughs> LibreOffice Writer, but as you can see, it's not, it's not, not really hard to get around in. And it doesn't take very long to pull anything up. So if you are using this as a distraction-free writing device, well, there you go. Plus, it'll get online and do other things for you. But on this one, I didn't install Chrome. I'm not sure what I'm, exactly what I'm going to do with it just yet, but everything's working. Everything's ready to go. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, so here it is. My eh, roughly $30 laptop off of eBay. It's now a distraction-free writing device that's powerful enough to do a couple other things as well. Like I said, distraction-free means it's going to mean different things to different people. If you need something to write a stream of consciousness down and, and you have a sudden idea and it pops into your head, this might not be the best option. It does take you know, a little bit to boot, whereas like something like a free write would actually, you know, you just, you just whip it out, you turn it on and it's ready to go. It's almost like having a piece of paper or, you know, some people compare it to a typewriter, but honestly, it'd be faster than a typewriter. So, you know, something like this eh, may not be your definition of distraction free, but for me, having those that just that little extra capability i like to edit while i'm writing it's not that i i have a sudden idea that i want to capture it's more of a i have the idea it's i write a lot of it in my head and then when i put it to paper i need to figure out how it sounds 
and I need to get the grammar correct. I need to get the spelling correct. I need to get, there's a lot of things I want to finesse as I write. Uh, and I will actually, I'll write a bit and then I'll go back and go through and edit things so that it sounds right or is spelled right or it has the right facts or that type of thing. This is slow enough, and I think that's pretty key, uh, and, and especially if we're talking about like a Raspberry Pi 02W device, you know, the Raspberry Pi 02W can get on the internet, but it can't run a, it can't run, for example, YouTube very well. It really struggles to play video. It'll really struggle to get on Facebook, and it'll really struggle to do a lot of things. This laptop with a single core processor and a limited amount of memory isn't going to do everything you can do with your bigger laptop, bigger computer. Being a separate device from your main computer also allows you to not log into things, to stay out of social media, to stay out of Google, to stay out of the places that you will cause you the most distraction. So, Maybe not distraction-free, but again, what distractions are you trying to keep out? And what exactly are your needs? I, I guess that's that's been the whole point of, of the previous video and this video. But I suppose the real point of this whole thing is you don't have to spend $300 or more to get something that will allow you to create that is a portable unit that has a long battery life. $30 plus a couple of parts. I think on this whole project, I spent $60. I spend more on, I, I spent more on my C64 projects, my retro computing projects than I spent on this laptop. You know, it's up to you. But as always, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.